Hello, my name is Graham Parker and welcome to the Hoof GP YouTube channel. In this video, I'm going to show you the differences between deer's feet and cow's feet or bovine feet. So if you haven't already done it, smash that subscribe button and give this big, give this big, give this video a big thumbs up by smashing that like button. If this video reaches 20,608 likes, then I will show you what is on my back covering the whole of it. And I'm pretty sure it'll shock most of you guys. So I have some cadaver feet, which are basically feet from a dead animal. This animal was shot just yesterday, I think, by a good friend of mine, Graham McCart, who actually supplies venison to the public. Um, he actually culls these animals on his land because they have to control the numbers. And obviously people are very, very fond of venison, even though it's dead deer. Extremely expensive. So first up, if we look at this straight away, the most obvious thing about it to me is the acute angle of this horn, it's much, much more pointy than a cow's hoof. I can see lots of similarities and some very big differences indeed. The, similar are, the, the similarities are, the horn is grown by the coronet up here and it comes down this way towards the point of the foot, exactly the same as a bovine or a cow claw does. On the bottom, if we turn it over, exactly the same formation as a cow's foot. So you have the, the outer wall horn here, which is this white hard horn, or white on the base anyway. Then you have the solar horn, and it's joined together by the white line. So it's absolutely identical to the way that a cow's foot is actually made. Now you can see that it's slightly concave because the solar horn is softer than the wall horn. Same as a cow, exactly the same as a cow. This is how a cow's foot would wear if it was in the wild. We still have the periopal horn, so this stuff up here is nice and soft and really pliable. This is what provides a lot of the suspension and the cushioning or the shock absorption. So when that animal bashes down, it lands there, rolls over and walks away. So these are called cloven feet. It's the same as a cow. Cloven feet basically means two claws. And I can tell from the bone structure in here, the bone structure is actually the same as a cow's as well. So one bone here, one here, and then one which joins it up to the ankle here. And that is the same on both sides. So a bone here, a bone here, and then a bone here. Now you can also see the deep flexor tendon. So right in there, there's a tendon. If I squish it, you can actually see that tendon protruding there. And if I cock the ankle, you'll see it come out. You see? How clever is that? So that tendon is what articulates the bottom of the foot. As the muscles contract the higher up the leg, that pulls on the tendon, which lifts the bottom of the foot up like that. What can happen is a foul in the foot is basically when the sheath of this tendon in here actually constrains and goes really really tight like this so you can't actually move that tendon. So the sheath that surrounds the whole of the tendon inflames and stops that from moving which basically freezes the foot like that and that's when you get a club foot. There are dew claws on here, exactly the same as a cow. Um, this animal's foot is in perfect condition. It's a really healthy deer. Obviously a deer does not have the same sort of um, stresses on it as a cow's foot does because of the weight. And a lot of the cows that I treat are housed 24 seven. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna get the saw out. I'm gonna cut this right down the dorsal wall and then I'm gonna cut it across the way because I really wanna see what is inside the foot. But before that, I'm gonna trim this exactly the same way I would trim a cow's foot and see what happens. So we've just got this as tight as we can get it and now I want to see how this foot reacts compared to a cow's horn. I have a feeling that it's going to be a lot softer than a cow's horn but I'm not completely sure. So let's go ahead with the grinder and see exactly how it feels. Okay, so straight away I've noticed that the proportions are different in a deer's foot. They are definitely more pointed. So the actual, the angle here is much more acute on a deer's foot than a cow's foot. How do I know that? Well, the proportional length, so the width compared to the length and the angle of the actual foot, I've not taken it back as far as I would take a cow's back proportionally and I'm actually starting to see the corium through the hoof of the deer here. 
So on this hoof here, you can actually see that there is very, very slight pinkness to it. Anyway, let's go ahead, cut this open and see exactly what a cross section looks like compared to a cow's foot. There we go, so this cross section is fantastic. It shows me here is the pedal bone. I need something pointy. So cutting this crossways really shows me an awful lot about the deer's foot. This is the axial wall, the abaxial wall. Here's the solar horn. And this is joined here by the white line. So you can clearly see that here and here. And then if I squash the foot, you can actually see this is the digital cushion here and it's really soft. So it's actually a fat pad. So although this deer has been in fantastic condition and not fat in any way, you can clearly see there is a very good fat pad. And if I squash the foot there, that's what happens. That cushion, the digital cushion, exactly the same as a cow's foot, absorbs the impact from the ground pushing upwards. You can see how flexible that solar horn air is. A lot of the time when you're actually trimming cow's feet, you think of the sole horn as being really rigid, but this just goes to show how flexible solar horn can be and what's happening underneath. So this kind of stuff is absolutely invaluable. It's great looking at things like this. You can see the laminate all the way up the interior of the wall horn here, and that's what attaches this outer wall horn to the interior part of the animal's foot. Really, really interesting, I find this stuff. I don't know about you guys, but I definitely do. Right, it's gonna be more interesting if we actually cut a full length cross section of this foot just to see exactly what is going on in there. So in order to get a full length cross section of it, you need to actually cut the bottom horns off first. Then I'm gonna trim the skin between the two so that I can cut a proper cross section right the way down here with the circular saw. So to me, this is absolutely fantastic. I can clearly see that the pedal bone, this pointy bone here, is much more acute or pointed than that of a cow's. So that is why the angles are not the same. So when I went to trim it, a cow's foot in relation to a deer's foot will be much shorter. Whereas this deer's foot is actually almost perfect. So it just shows that design for where they are living is perfect and that's why they don't need their feet trimmed. We house cows in unnatural surroundings so we need to ensure that we maintain their feet to the best of our abilities possible. So looking at this cross section of the deer's foot, you can see the pedal bone comes down here, the marrow's inside, you can see how soft that actually is and squidgy. It comes back right along here and there's that little point which isn't as pronounced on this deer's claw as it is on a cow's foot, which is quite interesting. So that means that deer are probably far less prone to getting ulcers than cows are. Here you have the start of P2, so that you can see it articulates, it moves in the joint. And here you can see the digital cushion. It extends, it's deep here and extends all the way right along the bottom. And if I squeeze it, you can see little droplets of blood actually coming out of there, because it's still not live, but it's still fresh. So as the periopal horn here, hits the ground, it impacts up and squidges and absorbs all of the impact, just the same way as a cow does. So part of the reason for me actually getting these deer's feet and cutting them up into pieces like this isn't just purely um, because I'm boring and a bit manky and a bit gory. What it is is, a lot of people ask me, I have a boar, somebody said I have a, I have a boar the other day, um, how would I go about trimming it? I get asked about pig's feet, sheep's feet, cow's feet, and the thing is, they're all different. I can tell by touch and feel where you need to stop in things, but sometimes that's too late. So you need to be trained properly in whatever type of animal it is that you're looking after. As we've proved here, the pedal bone, yes, it's still triangular. Yes, there's a pedal bone, P2, P3, P1, I can never remember which is which. So yes, they have the same rough skeletal structure, but the dimensions of those bones are different. And that might not sound like a great deal, but it is to the animal. If you take it too thin, you're gonna really, really hurt that animal and you're gonna make it lame. So when it comes to sheep or pigs or um, cows or any cloven animal, you need to be trained proficiently and properly in how to trim that actual cow. I always say cow. 
animal. So guys, if you haven't already done it, like I said at the start, give this video a big thumbs up and see if we can reach that goal so you can find out exactly what it is that's on my back that I find so interesting. And you possibly will and maybe won't. Thank you very, very much indeed for watching again. And as always, I'll see you again next time. And that huge announcement is in the wings, so you will be let in on the secret very, very soon.